We have joining us on the show, the director of Swallowed, Carter Smith, is joining us. This this movie, uh, it, it's a thriller. Jenna Malone is in it. It starts off as what seems like a simple, like, hey, you're being forced into smuggling drugs in your stomach in a balloon. But is that what is actually in the balloon? We don't know. I don't want to give it away. Look up the trailer for Swallowed. The poster for Swallowed is also a, an amazing indie film poster. If you follow the Film Threat Instagram, uh, on Instagram, we posted the poster for it because it was just so shocking, the shocking image. Uh, I think it's it's worth checking out. So go check out the, the poster on Film Threat on Instagram. Carter Smith is joining us here today, the writer, director. Hey, Carter, how's it going today? You're you're a little early at the beginning, but that's all good. Don't yeah, worry. you know what? I was, I was, I knew that it was 1055 and somehow I had it in my head at the wrong time. So sorry it's about all that. Good. It's all good, man. Um, tell us about this film. Tell us about the story behind it. And uh, I don't know that you want to give too much away, yeah. but give away what you can give away. I mean, you know, it started as, as just a, a, a a sort of a story about two best friends, you know, who grew up in this small main town and one of them is moving off to LA and his best friend wants to send him off with a pocket full of cash, you know, to set him up, you know, for his new life and agrees to deliver a package uh, over the border into Canada. And um, as things do, especially in movies like this, like everything that could go wrong does go wrong. Um, especially when Jenna Malone uh, shows up and then, um, you know, I, I, you can probably tell by the title that they end up swallowing <laughs> these, these things. And, you know, and it just, it, it, it kind of goes South from there and it ends up as sort of like a backwoods body horror thriller, uh, you know, sort of nightmare night uh, that these two, these two friends have to survive. How did you get uh, Jenna Malone to uh, appear in the film? Uh, Jenna, she was in my first feature film, which was The Ruins. Uh, so we had worked together before. We had a great experience and we had kind of stayed in touch and remained friends and always sort of had talked about doing something else together and, uh, you know, just hadn't found the right project. And this was, the, you know, this was the one when I was like, OK, this one's going to be small and lean and mean, but it's going to be really fun. So and she was she was game. Cool. And then these. uh these things that are swallowed can you say a little bit about them i i don't know how, how much you want to say uh yeah well they're not drugs i mean i think that i think that that's you know that yes. the, the reveal of them not being drugs is you know is something that i i'm happy to talk about but like you know exactly what they are i think that part of the horror of the film is you know with the characters sort of trying to figure out like what it you know they don't know until after they've swallowed these things uh, that they aren't what they uh, think that they are. So that's that's kind of the you know the un unspooling of the the horror of it all. Well, we've got uh, comments and questions from our audience. Over three hundred people watching live. Uh, yeah, I should mention um, our review of Swallow just uh, posted this morning. Uh, Bobby gave it a positive review, and he he mentioned that Jenna Malone is the MVP of the film, and and that you take her. Yeah, she's basically a much tougher Jenna Malone than than we're used to. Oh yeah, she's a badass in this movie. She's she's tough. You know, she's she's you know, she's small and soft spoken, but definitely it was fun to put her in that role. Cool. Let's let's um let's check it out real real quick. It's on the front page of Film Threat as we speak. There we go. Uh, Glad they, you like the poster too. They they <laughs> oh yeah, oh, the poster is so great. It's yeah, thank sort you. of a shocking image. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I thought it was awesome. Let's go to the uh, comments and questions here. Um, more comments and questions. Very cool having directors on the show. Awesome, says Rida Ibn Muhammad. Uh, Eric Stratton says, not Chris Gore. Chris, just a bit of gore. They're talking about, they're referencing the fact that I'm a little timid when it comes to films that have gore in it. Uh -huh. I love horror movies, but I like horror movies that are more psychological horror. Uh -huh. which I think your film fits that category of more psychological horror. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's not a lot of, there's actually very little blood in, in my film. There's um, some other body fluids and mucus and <laughs> you know, that kind of but, stuff, but it's not, it's not blood. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, yeah. Jenna Malone, uh, heart, heart says Jamie yes. D 
voltaic blood. And then Lubitsch touched me, says, I loved the ruins, underrated film for sure. And yeah, then people, people have been coming out of the woodwork like that. That it sort of went under the radar when it came out. And only in the last couple of years has there been this rally cry of people who are, you know, the ruined super fans, which is all nice. Some weird comment question here. Raylo Normie asks, how much drugs have you smuggled? <laughs> or are, are, are you are you aware of the business in the industry for authenticity's sake? Not at all. It was a completely fictitious take on what I imagined the backwoods uh, smuggling chain might look like. I'm yeah, I'm happy to say. Yeah, and then uh, someone from our chat, Dylan W, says I've done that. Ooh. It is super super dangerous. Had it attached to a fishing line, knotted around oh. my molar <laughs> and the condom. Oof. That sounds awful, Dylan. <laughs> Holy Dylan, dude, that is, uh, I, I don't know if you want to give any more details, but wow, I never thought of that. You could attach it to a molar, but what if you- I would think it would be easier to let it go than take its natural course than rather than trying to pull it back up. Yeah. Uh, Dada DeBaser says the ruins was very underrated. So, and Jen McMahon, who's a member, says, I'm getting Lucy vibes. I'm intrigued about Swallowed. Any comment on that? I don't know. What are Lucy vibes? Uh, Is that the Jennifer Lawrence movie or? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. don't, don't, Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, it's not like Lucy. I'll just say that. (laughs) And then uh, the nerd far away asked, what made you want to make this movie? Um, so this was a film like this was a, a a tiny little indie production that we made in the backwoods of Maine with a lean, mean crew of like eight people, not counting actors. And so it, it kind of came from the, you know, the position of like, you know, as a director, you spend a lot of time waiting around to get financing, to get actors, to get, you know, pieces into place to to make the film. And that can be pretty frustrating and can take a lot longer than you want. And I was just like, I wanted to go and make a movie that that I could make and I could call up my friends and we could go and, and just make it without having to wait around for someone to sort of say, you have permission now to make this movie, go and do it. Um, so it was, it was definitely like a, you know, it, it came from that, just from the, you know, the urge to just make something. Cool. And then uh, let's see, do you enjoy working post-production? Says Akinika. Um. I mean, I, th- there's an ed- my editor who edited Swallowed, who's also a sound designer. We actually, ha- I actually really like uh, being in post and editing because there's something like, you know, as a photographer and as a filmmaker, it's very rare that I'm ever like going to a job and, and sort of on a normal schedule. And I find, you know, going to an office and, and sitting down and working for eight or 10 hours a day is actually kind of um, a nice change from what I'm used to you know, which is like freelance and traveling and, and there's something kind of great about it. Like, yeah, I felt like a, like a normal work, like a, like a real job. And then, uh, is it true you directed an S club seven music videos? Yes, it is. Reach for the stars. If you can, it's really hard to find this video, but it is, I mean, and I don't even think that the band or the management understood it at the time, but it was S club seven riding around in this magical, sailboat ferry bus giving out hallucinogenic psychedelic candies <laughs> to all of the the local people that picked it up on the street as the bus drove by who all started tripping and became rabid s club seven fans uh let's see more questions here uh raylo normie says do creators need to go to school to be a filmmaker i don't think so i i didn't i mean i went to a a, a short little program at the new york film academy um but i did, certainly didn't go to film school I, but I will say like, you know, as working as a photographer for years and years was, was definitely training for, you know, how to communicate with um, collaborators and how to, you know, how to work on set and how to you know, some of those skills, I think are more important than probably the stuff you learn in school. What did you learn from the New York Film Academy that, that you, that, that basically what, what, uh, what did you glean from it that made you a better filmmaker? I mean, you know, I, I think that, you know, it was, it was definitely, it was the first time that I had worked on a little, on shorts with, with, a, with a crew, like, you know, with, I crewed on other people's films, they crewed on mine. More than anything, it was just kind of interesting and exciting to like have a sense of community, which I think is something that like with filmmaking, 
like being surrounded by other people that are, you know, that are sort of into the same stuff is, is really valuable. I mean, we, we did shoot on, on 16 and cut on Steenbeck's and this was, you know, a long time ago when the New York film Academy was, you know, not what it is today. It sort of has grown into something much bigger. You know, our class was like 12 people. Um, but it was, it was, it, it was about the community more than anything. And that's what I loved about it. Cool. Vic rules six, six, six. Do you use storyboards for your movies? Um, I do some sort of like little chicken scratching type things myself. Uh, especially if it's a, like an action sequence or a, an effects sequence. Um, but you know, on a movie like Swallow, there was you know there wasn't a, a ton of 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 that. But you know, on a bigger film, if you're doing anything with visual effects or anything like that, then then yes, I mean, I would love to do it for every shot of every single film, but there usually just isn't the time or budget for that. Cool. A few more questions here. Uh, Lubitsch touched me as considering Mike Patton only recently started acting again. What was it like working with him? Uh, Mark Patton. Uh, is incredible. He's, you know, he, he has, um, you know, he, he has been doing the, the sort of the horror convention circuit for a long time. And I first sort of, I mean, I saw him in Nightmare on Elm Street 2, which is, you know, when I was a kid and when he was a kid, basically. And then when I saw the documentary Scream Queen about his experience making that movie, I just became fascinated with, with him as a person. And, you know, for him to come back and be able to jump into a role like this, like it's a juicy role. Like he is unhinged and, you know, as sort of vicious and queer and, you know, dangerous as, you know, the worst villain ever. And so it was really fun to to play with him in that way, you know, where he didn't have to worry about being like the good boy or the, you know, the, the hero. Uh, question here from Ryan Landis. How long did it take for you to write the script and were there any major changes during uh, filming? Um, I wrote the script in about a month, which is very fast for me. Usually it takes, I labor over stuff for a long time. And, but this, uh, I think because I set such a specific set of of sort of guidelines for myself, like I'm only going to write things that I know that I have access to. Like I've got, you know, I've got this cabin, the, the cabin that we shot the film at is, a, is an off the grid cabin that my dad built. Um, and so I was like, I've, I've, I'm only going to use things that I know that I have. And that was actually really helpful uh, in keeping me focused and keeping the, the, the storyline, you know, sort of streamlined. Um, and there weren't that many big changes. I mean, there was changes to dialogue and there was changes to, you know, moments within scenes, but structurally, you know, it takes place almost in real time over the course of one horrific night. And so there wasn't a lot of like, you know, extra stuff that we added or stuff that we ended up taking out. Um, there was like one little sequence that we shot that we ended up cutting, but that's the only thing that we shot that we didn't use. Brox, uh, Samsonite, uh, just final questions here. Is this streaming now or coming to theaters soon? This will be streaming on uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. Uh, <laughs> and you will have to uh, watch it at home in a dark room with your phone in a drawer with the sound turned up loud. And, uh, and with your loved one. And with your loved one, or if you hate, if you hate Valentine's Day, it's kind of a good movie for that too. <laughs> it's, it's a little twisted. Oh, cool. And then uh, any chance of a UK release asks James Woolard. Yes, we have a UK distributor. Uh, I am awaiting news. It shouldn't be uh, too long. Um, I'm heading over there in March uh, to, to kick it off. So that'll, that'll be coming up. And then last question, Raymond Britton White asks, great show, homies. Any screenwriting tips? You said you wrote the script in a, in a month. That's fast. I mean, I, I would say set, set up a, set your parameters, set your, set your, um, your sort of guidelines of, of, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to write a script that you can actually make and you want to make yourself, uh, you know, kind of come up with the stuff that, that makes sense that you have and, and don't, you know, follow the shiny new thing and start writing spaceships and hospitals and huge crowd scenes. And I mean, sort of focus on what you have access to if, if you're writing a script that you want to try to make, you know, in a, in the real world. Cool. Uh, well, I want to say thank you, Carter Smith, for joining us on the show, your movie. Uh, you can go to actually filmthreat.com and check out a review of Swallowed today. And on February 14th, could not be timed even better. Yeah, you can watch. You can tell your your significant other we're going to watch a movie called Swallowed. 
get them all <laughs> excited and then yeah exactly <laughs> Cool. Uh, Carter, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on the film. Thank uh, you so great much. Talking to you. All right. Yeah. Take care. Thanks. Later. Bye.